Do you think the credit crunch has affected the attitude that companies take towards working capital? Absolutely. What we see is that working capital moves with the economic cycle. When times are good, companies are focused on earnings. When times get tough, companies switch their focus to cash and working capital. The survey that we've just completed of 550 companies across Europe and the US shows that cash and working capital is now the highest or a high priority for 83% of respondents. What's the biggest driver of this change in attitude? I think there are, there are three key areas that came out of the survey which are feeding into this uh, focus on cash and working capital. The first is stakeholder pressure. Um, over 50% of the respondents to the survey said they'd seen a significant increase in the amount of pressure from stakeholders. Banks, analysts, investors, all putting more focus and more pressure on companies to generate cash flow. The second area is reduced access to financing. 75% of the survey respondents said that they were seeing some impact in terms of access to finance and 42% said that they were seeing a significant impact uh, in terms of access to finance. The third area that we're seeing is around the cost of finance. So 86% of respondents said that they've seen an increase in the cost of finance with 45% of respondents saying that that's significant. So when we look at those numbers, those three areas, the stakeholder pressure, the increased cost of finance, and the restricted access to finance, and the percentages of companies that are, that are saying that they're seeing a significant impact in these areas, it's understandable to see why focus is shifting more onto cash and working capital. Companies seem to be focusing on short-term solutions, such as delaying payment terms. How can CFOs break out of this short-term thinking and put in solutions that will last for the long term? You're absolutely right about short-term thinking. What we saw from the survey is that 92% of companies said that they're seeing their customers try to lengthen the payment terms. Likewise, they said that 81% of, of companies are seeing suppliers demanding shorter payment terms. So you've got a situation of your customer saying, we want to pay you later, your supplier saying, we need our cash sooner, all of which is creating a bigger working capital burden for companies. We asked companies, well, what do you plan to do in this sort of situation? And, and the results were quite concerning and shocking in that 49% said we're going to negotiate longer payment terms with our suppliers and 42% said we're going to try and tighten the credit lines to our, to our customers. So ultimately, everybody's doing the same thing, which turns into a bit of a zero-sum game. It sounds like there aren't going to be any winners in that game if everyone's doing the exact same thing. Absolutely. The only people that really win in that sort of situation are the people right at the top of the chain. So people such as retailers that get their cash immediately but then have the ability to squeeze their suppliers uh, and therefore extract more cash out of the business that way. What companies really need to be thinking about is how do we negotiate and achieve more of a win-win situation uh, with both our customers and our suppliers so that we can improve the overall efficiency of the supply chain. So be that, how do we get more accurate and timely information from our customers that enables us to then manage our business, our manufacturing, our procurement more effectively and in turn pass some of those benefits on to suppliers. That way, everybody in the cycle wins, and it's not just about the, the biggest uh, using their, their force in order to extract benefit from the weakest. The survey shows some interesting insights on cash flow forecasting. Can you share some of those insights with us? Cash flow forecasting is a, is a very interesting area, especially given the current economic climate. On the good news side, we found that 95% of companies are doing some type of cash flow forecasting, which is very positive. Unfortunately, on the, the bad news side, we found that only 14% of companies said that they're actually accurate in their cash flow forecasting. So 14% is a very low percentage of companies achieving accuracy in their forecast, especially given the importance of cash in the current economic climate. When we looked a little bit wider and said, OK, how many companies are actually achieving accuracy within plus or minus 10% of their original forecast, we still found that 55% of companies um, are not achieving a plus or minus 10% accuracy level. You know, that, that's, a, that's a really low number uh, and, and ultimately something where companies really need to focus um, to get much better um, visibility around the cash. Why do you think that is? Why is it so difficult to get cash flow forecasting right? 
I think there's a, there's a number of reasons that feed into it. I think you've got historical reasons where companies are coming off a period where they've been very focused on earnings, cash has been less of a priority for businesses, uh, people haven't been incentivized and targeted around cash in the business, and therefore it just hasn't had the same degree of, of attention that it needs in the current marketplace. I think in addition, what we generally find is that forecasting tends to be a very finance-driven activity and only including or involving the finance function. In order to drive greater forecast accuracy, you really need to involve all of the budget holders and stakeholders uh, within the forecast. So you need to involve the people that, that own the, the CapEx budget, that own the OpEx budget for your business, uh, people in sales, people in procurement. All of those people are feeding in, making decisions on a daily basis that affect the cash requirements of your business, and therefore they should be involved in the forecasting process. You mentioned incentives. How important are incentives to managing working capital? I think incentives are critical. What we saw from the survey was that there's a very significant link between companies that incentivize their management on cash and working capital and their working capital performance. So we asked companies going back three years and looking forward three years um, how they were expecting to do and how they had done. And what we found is that companies that incentivize have fared much better in the past and they expect to do much better moving forward. Working capital is clearly a high priority for companies in the current economic environment. Can you summarize for us what companies should really be focused on to drive improvements? I think that the most important thing that companies should be looking at in, in the current climate is around achieving visibility and control of the cash and working capital in their business. And that's more than just forecasting. Forecasting is a critical component of achieving visibility and, and accurate forecasting, especially because if it's not accurate, then it's no good. Um, but forecasting is one component. The other critical components are really around do we have the right management reporting in place? So do we have the right visibility of, of what's happening on a, on a weekly, a monthly basis, which is feeding all the way across the business? Um, are we measuring the right things? We've been into companies in the past where they're measuring the number of phone calls made in a call center to collect debt but they're not actually measuring the effectiveness of those calls in, in actually recouping the debt from customers. So measuring the right metrics are absolutely critical. Um, also, making sure we've got the right policies in place. Policies in a firm govern behavior, and if we don't have the right policies in place, then ultimately we're not going to get the behavior that we're looking for. Um, and then finally, really looking at the targets, the incentives, and the right roles and responsibilities. So, are people properly targeted? Are incentives in place which drive the right type of behavior? And ultimately, are roles and responsibilities clearly defined? Working capital is one of those things that's very cross-functional within a firm, um, but typically firms are managed very functionally. So we need to make sure that the roles and responsibilities are clear and defined so that working capital gets managed appropriately. Given what you said about working capital moving in cycles, how can managers ensure that the, the benefits that they put in now are sustained over the next few years? That's a good question. Sustainability is, is one of the biggest challenges, I think, for a lot of companies. When we go into firms, typically there's a big fanfare around improving cash and working capital, and that typically lasts as long as it takes to Im improve performance. Then companies shift their focus to the next strategic priority, and over time you see cash and working capital performance deteriorate back to its original levels. Companies really need to focus on making cash and working capital part of business as usual. Uh, it needs to be part of the everyday decision-making process. It needs to feed into the strategic decision-making process within a firm. So when a company is thinking about shifting manufacturing to a low-cost country environment or expanding into a new market, they need to think about the, the cash and working capital consequences that are associated with those strategic decisions. And it's only through making it really part of business as usual, getting people to think about it on a daily basis, that you'll really achieve sustainability.